So this weekend was a lot. Um, with the Roe v. Wade decision being overturned, whatever you want to call it, Supreme Court, Supreme Court case. Um, I know because I live in California, my rights are not actually going to be revoked, at least not today. California is actually doing a lot to increase access, um, both for Californians as well as people who are coming from other states to protect their rights and protect their lives, honestly, both while they're in California and if they do choose to go back to the place from which they came. Um, California is actually creating laws to do the opposite of what some of the other states are doing. And so it gives me a lot of thankfulness, gratitude that I do live in a state that is so intentional about like, oh, okay, well, y'all say this is a state's rights, but we got you. These are our state's rights. Um, I'm also paying for it. So there's that. But I also, knowing so many of my students don't have that same access, aren't going to continue to have the same access. Like if we are trying to diversify medicine, if I'm trying to diversify medicine, we already know students who come from disadvantaged backgrounds have a harder time getting in and continuing to be successful in medicine. At a certain point, studies show that having access to resources and having access to support really makes a huge difference in your ability to be successful. But in that process, before you have that access to resources or support, mitigating factors that might prevent you from getting to where you want to go is really helpful and necessary. So having access to things that help mitigate those factors is also necessary. We can have a whole other conversation about life decisions and things like that, but I'm sure there are a whole lot of life decisions that you are thankful nobody knows about because it really would have screwed you over in life. That's all I'm going to say about the right to choose whatever. All of that to say, it got me to a space where I had and often have to reflect on the blessings God has given me and like the life that I was born into that I didn't do anything to deserve. But because of God's grace, this is the life that I've been given and acknowledging that I'm not just given this life for myself. I'm given it to help other people to increase equity in the world, honestly, more than anything. And so... um. I was reflecting today on Psalm 23 and thinking about just, I'll pretend it's the Psalm as David. Maybe it's David. I don't know. I really don't care. I'm not a pastor. don't intend to be a pastor. So like the Bible history relevance is, yeah, this is a poem. And so just setting the stage about the poem for Psalm 23, this is like a shepherd boy who's probably like, one day, bored AF, all you're doing in your job is watching sheep, like, eat and sleep. And then moving them from some lions or some wolves or some other predators or some things. And making sure they don't do dumb stuff like jump off a cliff. Like, that's your day as a shepherd. So I'm sure there get moments where you're like, bro, I'm about to doze off. Or I'm about to get really distracted. But you recognize your rep's on the line. So, like, if a sheep leaves or dies or, like, you lose it... It's kind of a problem, like it's not a good thing, so you have to stay alert and on the job. So this particular shepherd was probably bored one day and decided, let me write some poems about God. Let me just like reflect on what God means in my life and write a poem about it. And so thinking about that, I'm using a critical analysis lens. I am a mem cat teacher, and so critical analysis and thinking is always something really forefront of my mind. Um, and so I want to just show you some of the things that I found when I was analyzing this. I also challenged myself. I found that I have actually been really passively reading the Bible, not actively reading it, not making it applicable to my life. And so forcing myself to actually make this applicable to my life instead of just passively consuming what somebody else has written has made a huge difference in my understanding of this passage. So I hope you learned something. So it starts... The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And what I noticed in all of that is like, it's an if then statement followed by a whole bunch of examples. So starts, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If the Lord is my shepherd, then I shall not want. So if this is a shepherd thinking about his life as a shepherd, 
because he is a shepherd over his sheep, they don't want anything. He's the person who's in charge of getting their food. He's in charge of the stuff. The sheep literally just get to la, 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 because the shepherd makes sure the sheep are safe. So if the Lord is my shepherd, I don't have anything that I want either. Like I, everything's covered. You're just going to guide me into all of the things. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. So the same way as you see them sheep just laying down, God's making you lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And this also goes back to the whole, like, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't drink, make it drink. Just because God is leading you to water that is calm for you to drink doesn't mean you're actually going to do it. But recognizing that that's the intention of the shepherd. So for me, I'm not a shepherd. I don't like sheep. I've never really hung out with sheep, so maybe I would like it, but like I'm allergic to wool, so there's that. But um, one thing that I think about my identity is as a teacher. And so for me, instead of the Lord is my shepherd, if I reflect on myself as a teacher, if the Lord is my teacher, then I'm always inspired. They make me remember there's more to learn. They lead me to ask more questions. They calm me down when I get anxious. They show me the way to go so I can show the world who they are. Instead of thinking, oh, this is what the sh shepherd is doing for the sheep. These are the things that I really try to value about myself that I'm able to do for my students and intentionally create space to do for my students, inspiring them. Remember, making them aware that there's always more to learn. There's always more to grow making them have more questions, making them curious about the things that they're discovering. I don't see God as leading me to water. Yes, God absolutely may lead me to water and we can do whatever. God calms me down when I get anxious. So if God is my teacher, then all of these things. So I challenge you, if God is your whatever, what does that mean for you? And what are some examples based on your life of the things that that means God does in your life for you? Psalms 23, one through three. Four and five, it shifts. And instead of saying he and describing he as like an impersonal, it shifts to the personal you. And it's talking about more the relationship they have between one another. Instead of this being a caretaker thing where it's like, that's not symbiosis at all. There's no give and take here. It's just your protection over me. Now we're talking intimate relationship. Things are doing in between. So, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. All of those things are just, I don't understand how we have this type of a friendship. I'm just baffled that this can be the relationship that you and I have together I'm in a valley of a shadow of death, but I don't fear evil because you're with me. Like, that's really powerful. And so for me, like, I'm not leading these sheep into no valleys that are really dark and stuff. And I have to, like, really not fear evil in that situation. But as a teacher, I definitely encounter opposition. I definitely encounter people who are skeptical of my qualifications. And so, yay, though I, uh, yay, though I encounter oppositions and skeptics. I don't fear them because you are on my side. Your arc is long, but it bends toward justice. I don't have a rod and a staff to comfort me, but I have an understanding that the arc of the universe bends towards justice. And that comforts me more than anything. You prepare a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. All of these things, that's just, how are you giving me these blessings and letting other people see it? Like, it's not, you're just preparing a table before me. It's, you're doing it in front of my enemies. So, like, as a shepherd, that could be, you're letting these sheep eat, and you know there's predators around who are trying to eat these sheep. And this is exactly the best time to eat the sheep because they're real not paying attention. 
you do that for me. So you are preparing a table in my in the presence of my enemies. And then not just that, like you didn't just give the table. Now you're going to anoint my head with oil. Like you're going to show them that like I'm actually an honored guest. I'm important in this situation. And you're going to make sure that my cup never goes empty. So you're not even pressed for us to get out of this situation. You're really chilling. Like we're just going to lavishly experience this. And that's honestly how she'd be eating. They're not pressed to eat. They have no awareness that wolves are around. They're just eating what they want. So for me, making it applicable to myself, you give me opportunities when I don't see myself as qualified. And you keep doing it. There are things that I would absolutely count myself out where I would be like, why are you doing this? But I have to recognize I don't really have to understand why God is doing it. God is doing it and just acknowledging that it's happening over and over again. And it is concerning and baffling and weird. And then it ends with an affirmation. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all of the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Affirming all of the things that they want to be true about themselves. So surely this will come true. Goodness and mercy. Goodness. Mercy will follow me all of the days of my life. So for me, my affirmations, and this is something that I wanted intentionally to be something that I would read and or say at least once a week, hopefully every day. We'll see about that consistency thing. But my affirmation, what I made it for me, God's grace and mercy will always be given to me. And I choose to create the kingdom of God here on earth. That one day there will be no difference between the kingdom and earth. So I encourage you to find your favorite Bible verses. Maybe it's Psalm 23, maybe it's something else. And instead of just reading it and memorizing it for what it says, read it and translate it to what it means in your life. How do you critically analyze the Bible? 